that about encapsulates my whole life right there. I can just start talking while I put this on. Rock and roll. What does that have to do with how girls can change the world? Empowerment. Joyful fearlessness. Here's where we've been yet. I was born in Manila, biracial and bicultural, just after World War II. <clears throat> By the time I moved to California in 61, my sister and I were just entering into the years, into our early teen years. But then uh, something happened to me and Jean, and that something was music. We went from playing ukuleles to acoustic guitars, then met some other girls, started a band, went electric, a band, in 1964, in Northern California. This is where it got really interesting, and where our experience of the world absolutely changed for us. There's something about being in a band. All of a sudden, there's this mysterious synergy, and it's intoxicating, sort of like getting high and going to hyperspace at the same time, except it's inner space, like atoms exploding right in your DNA, and it's encoded. We're finding out now that the human body is wired to accept frequencies in music, all sound, as learning and healing patterns, actually wired for communication and happiness levels. Happiness levels. We've been designed to access all through the experience of music. So girls can find ways to both cohese and explode at the same time in the best way. These are our future mothers, sisters, daughters, lovers, best friends. So if we can find ways to inform them of these possibilities, of all the positivities, we can change the world. Girls love to hang out, to go into a kind of estrogen dream state. I know a lot of guys don't understand this, but believe me, it is very powerful. And there's reasons for all this. It starts with and translates into experiences in the womb. That's where we start. And by the way, we now know that sound is the first of the seven senses that we experience in the womb. Okay? So when you combine sound with goals, happiness, possibilities, you've got the perfect storm. You're tapping into impulses at the preverbal stage, at the center of the engine that drives us. You don't need to keep filling it with gas. Girls especially just need to discover that it's there. Once they discover it's safe and exciting to collaborate, they never want to stop. What they're being socialized into out in the world is counterproductive to what life really requires, collaboration. In 1987, I found myself co-founding the Institute for the Musical Arts for Women and Girls in Music because of what I learned experientially about how playing in the rock milieu can help girls connect with something essential. Seeing the dynamic play out almost 50 years after I started of girls forming bands is incredible. I mean, it's just amazing. Girls playing themselves is one of the great forces that can catapult these women into another level entirely. You almost have to see it to believe it. I didn't even want to play lead guitar. I wanted to rock, but shred on rhythm. What I had to pull out of myself was in, in part dispelling the very idea of being passive. It's stepping out of a whole mindset, which can be scary, but wow, when you're in it, look out. We support that institutionally at IMA. I now find myself saying that rock and roll isn't necessarily a type of music, it's an attitude of fearlessness, of authentic creativity, of developing trust and jumping into the unknown, of falling in love with that very idea. The simple act of playing together counterbalances the messages of who we are. You know, the good girl, bad girl, all that. It's pretty scary from the girls' perspective. It's a big job. 
Because of the way things have become un unbalanced between male and female, the technology that's been developed out of that imbalance is poised to destroy us. It really needs to be balanced out because we've taken it to a dangerous place. Girls who know they have choices, who experience power in healthy and integrated ways, can change the world. I discovered something fantastic in connection with the rock attitude and working with girls at our camps. And that is, when they're having fun, they forget that they were once afraid. You know, like one minute ago? <laughs> Now everything's changed. Being away from the world on our 25-acre property with a barn full of equipment, they don't feel so observed by the world. They're not comparing so much. They're not judging themselves. This is transformational. Having that opportunity of stumbling into joy, of having an essentially unedited, fresh, and electric experience, it turns out is key to the girls' futures. We know that because they tell us so, and so do their parents. This is a game changer, especially at that age. I'm talking about joyful fearlessness. When you're not so afraid, you don't push at the world so much, so automatically, everybody's happiness level goes up. And that's real change. It's hard to fight when you're singing a song. Rocking the world can be done on many levels. So once these girls find out a way to do it one way, once, their seismic, once they have that seismic shift, their whole paradigm changes. And that's partly because they know how to jam, which is slang for improvisation. I have a friend who's argued in front of the Supreme Court and who told me that playing drums in her teens was instrumental to her confidence level approach and success. We're building a new sisterhood. It's healthy, non-confrontational, powerful. You don't need to confront, just do. Do that happiness thing and good things will happen. It's almost too easy, isn't it? Exploring and welcoming our own and each other's potential and having an almost indescribable amount of fun doing it, it's the bomb. And by the way, it's very sexy on any number of levels and comes packaged with collaborative leadership skills. Snap. <laughs> This is a win-win. It's no accident that I went from the Svelts to Fanny, the band that went to Hollywood with the record deal in 1969 and was on the very first Sonny and Cher show and lived to tell about it. Girls need good role models, and we're doing that and providing mentorship, too. I sure didn't have that in 1964. We loved the Supremes, but they didn't play their own instruments. We were hungry for it, but it just wasn't around. We had to create ourselves and become the role models. Understanding this is really important. Rock and roll was the only vehicle we could ride because girls had to prove that we could play like guys, which we did. It was the only real option, the only frame. Now we've gone way past that and are taking a new model out into the world. Let's take it another step. The model we're working with is one of cooperation, not competition. In sports, which is also empowering for girls, <laughs> Shirley win a game and cream you in the process that they can with grins, but then they need to go to that soft place where the nurture is. And that's really really important. The result of healthy and positive mirroring is a particular smile. That's become my new yardstick. Anything less than that is not really success. You know when it's the real thing. That smile, it'll light up the world. We're at a critical place in our evolution. That's why we, we absolutely, that's why having this women-run space in which to learn how to jam differently with the world is so important. We're at critical mass and we need organic change. When you encourage improvisation, which we do at IMA, that's an invitation to be out of the box and develops confidence. If they fall, we're there. If they need to talk, we're there. If they need to borrow equipment, they're there. This is a very different actively supportive model. I mean, where else could you go and say, I need to borrow a 15 watt for a small gig, but we need to shred, and oh, could we borrow a small PA2 and that cool snare? 
I may get handed down to future generations, so these young women know that their daughters, sisters, nieces, will be going to this palace of potential that we're creating ourselves, moment to moment. This has never been done before. In fact, women's contributions to music have been historically underplayed, even wiped out of history, his story. But we're changing that. The stories themselves have power. Here's a glimpse of that early all-girl band scene from my upcoming autobiography, and I'm going to read, read this because I want to quote myself properly. What was going on inside our beehive, no one else could have possibly known. Above all, it was implicitly forbidden. We had our own master key, and we owned it. It, the secret, was that we were learning to do it ourselves. No matter what anyone else thought or said, we were in the magic circle. There were no other girls doing just this with a camaraderie and sense that we were getting away with something. We couldn't believe it. So what that people knocked us for doing it? They had no idea what it felt like when it was good, which was so much better than any lame thing they could say from their no knowing. Here's part of that secret, the joy level, joyful fearlessness. It's accessible and flows through everyone in the room, 100% of everyone absolutely irresistible. The ear works algorithmically, so all of a sudden, you're in new and magical places. And all of that quickly accelerates. What does that mean to young girls? It means they're somewhere else, someplace where they don't have to listen to messages the world is beaming at them. All of a sudden, now they're in a safe place and they're listening to something in themselves. Imagine. Here's a beautiful thing. You don't need a passport to get there, or a visa. You don't even need to learn another language. The language is in you. It's already encoded. One minute, you're a girl hanging out, smiling, maybe shyly. The next minute, you're a goddess. At our camps, girls tap into an authentic creativity they haven't experienced since having that magical, invisible friend way back when and they can't believe they're writing such great songs. Create the space and they will come and prosper. Girls and a barn full of equipment, a support system away from the regular world, conjure that and you will be amazed at the healing that naturally occurs. These young girls are forming that new sisterhood and it's astounding. You know, just like add water and watch it rise. This is our future, the future that can be. We add on to the positive experiences of life, and the girls carry it forward into the world. They can't help it. They are our mothers, sisters, daughters, lovers, best friends. And they're much more ready and better equipped to face the world.